hour to decorate this cake. Please forgive me if I seem like I'm rushing. I will try and still explain how to trick people into thinking you can bake during decoration because as I said, this is kind of like the most key part. After you've made an edible cake, honestly, the cake can be pretty average flavor, really average taste. But if you decorate it and make it look really cute, people are gonna be like, wow, that gal, that guy can bake. I left the cakes to cool. I did cover them in cling film once they were completely cool, just to stop them from drying out. But honestly, there's not that high a risk of it drying out overnight. So for this cake, I'm gonna be using buttercream, Oreos, and maybe like a chocolate ganache kind of thing to decorate it. So I have some dairy milk Oreo that I'm gonna use and also some plain chocolate. The way that you melt chocolate when you're using it for a cake or for anything, to be honest, pop the chocolate in to a plastic bowl and place it over a pot of boiling water and that will allow the chocolate to melt slowly without burning it. You can melt in the microwave but there's just a high risk of like burning it and it just not being a great consistency. So that is how I'm going to melt the chocolate. While that is melting I'm going to move on to my next super important tip of how to trick people into thinking you can bake and that is tools. Decorating a cake is all about the tools. Now you might be thinking Sarah I don't have that kind of money this isn't that deep I just want to make one birthday cake one time but honestly you do not need to remortgage the house to get the right baking tools if you know where to look if you live in the UK I truly recommend that you pop into home bargains this video is not sponsored by home bargains but it should be because they are just so cheap now this is the turntable that I use so it's basically a flat surface which spins and it is not very good it's kind of unstable it can come apart very easily but it does the job now you can definitely get more expensive versions of this 20 50 quid but this one I, if i remember correctly cost me like 3.99 just something ridiculously cheap and it does the job it really does do the job i've made wedding cakes with this the next thing you need is a scraper now i recommend getting a large scraper one that you can use for different heights of cake you can also get short ones again this one i believe is from home bargains again it cost me about three pounds so a scraper you can also use pallet knives and um, i think i got this one in a set for maybe like a five and these and the turntable are what i would recommend the most a scraper and a turntable and you're good to go i am going to be making my own buttercream today but you can totally just buy some from the shop that's already in a tub. anyone asks you whether you made the buttercream yourself like they can mind their own business you know did you lay the eggs yourself no did you pluck the wheat from the field for the flour. Is flour made of wheat? No. Not everything has to be homegrown and home laid, okay? You can totally cheat and just buy some buttercream. But I will be making my own buttercream. Now, if you are making your own buttercream, you want to make sure that the butter is soft. Not too soft, but soft enough that you can push it. So you, you want it to be like plier. I can just about push into it and it will give way but not completely collapse on me. As you can see that is very yellow right now. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did while baking to beat it for an extended period of time and make it nice and white and fluffy. that a sec because I want to tell you what I'm about to do with the cakes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to level the cakes. Now as you can see these cakes are already pretty flat. I could definitely make a non-wonky cake using that and just even the top with the buttercream. However because they are a little bit darker than I wanted them if you imagine cutting into this cake what you would see when you cut into it would be this nice beige bottom, the fleshy cake, and then a brown layer on top. And then when you get a slice of a three layer cake, you will literally just get this brown film looking from the side. I don't want that. I want this to be cute and look good when you cut into it. So I'm gonna trim off all the brown from the top, making sure I get a nice flat top of the cake. Now you can use a cake leveler. So those are those little like saw things. I have one of those. I left it at my parents' house. I should pick it up at some point, but I just don't find it very useful. I think it's more, Ag than it's worth. I have eyes, thank the Lord, to see, so I will just look and make sure it's even. But it just needs to be flat to the human eye, so my eye is human, it will definitely do. And this is also a great opportunity to taste the cake if you're, you know, trying a new recipe and you want to check it's not too sweet. Then you can taste it and adjust your buttercream to get the right kind of balance. Okay, so my butter's looking pretty decent, pretty nice and white and fluffy the way that you want to add the icing sugar i have come to realize that no matter how slowly i add it there will always be a thin layer of icing all over my kitchen so i don't even bother wasting my time i just add it all at the same time and just know that there's going to be an explosion and um, this does help because then i can cover it a little bit i don't know we'll see how we'll see how it goes <laughs> Don't try this at home, add the buttercream really slowly. It's never really worked for me, no matter how slowly I add it, it always goes everywhere, so 
Yeah, we're on to new methods, hun. <laughs> My buttercream is done. And the next thing I'm gonna show you is another trick into making people think you can bake, and that is your packaging. This box cost me £1.29 from Home Bargains. It is cute, it is mint green, and it comes with a cake tray. If I put my cake in a cute box, people are literally gonna be like, Saz, is you a professional? And I'll be like, no, I just was willing to spend an extra pound. Yeah, depending on how committed to the cause you are, get you a cute cake box. So that is just a mat to help it all stop moving around. So, what you want to do is you want to get some buttercream, put it in the centre of your board, no wider than the first layer of cake. Basically, you just want to place that in the centre of the board. Um, it's quite forgiving, actually, so you can always move it around. Um, so, yeah, that is the base that we're starting with. After I melted the chocolate, I actually, just for time purposes, popped it in the fridge to make it cool down a bit quicker. So, it's still melted. It is just cold. So, here is my melted chocolate that is still melted and nice and runny, it's just not too warm. Around the outside, this is the worst bag ever. I got these bags from Morrison's and it's literally coming out the side. Okay, this is going terribly wrong. But basically, I'm gonna do a damn, oh, do you know what, this is just going terribly wrong, look at that. I've not used these bags before. These are from Morrison's and look at that, it can't deal with the pressure. So that probably means my buttercream is a little bit thick. Um, but honestly, the bag should be able to cope, but that is a joke, that is an actual joke. So annoyed about that, what a joke. Oh my goodness, and that actually makes me feel a bit itchy. And I'm gonna add in a layer of chocolate into the center and just spread that around. Crushed Oreos. I'm gonna take the second layer of cake and place it on top. And again, just coming around the outside, creating a nice dam. These are the worst piping bags I've ever used. Literally do not recommend it. To be honest, I only bought them because they came with the nozzles and the nozzles are good, but look at that. I'm gonna place that on top like so. The next tip is another way of tricking people into thinking you can bake. Doing a crumb coat of buttercream, which is a thin coat of buttercream that you put right next to the cake, which will pick up all the crumbs from your cake, popping it in the fridge and then doing a second coat, okay? So that basically makes sure that you don't have a cake crumbs in your buttercream on the final look. Now, if you do want your buttercream process to be easier, you can pop the cake in the fridge for a little bit, which will just get a nice firm um, cake, which is just a lot easier to work with than a soft sponge. Scrape off all the excess of that crumb coat, twisting it around like so. And the only thing I want this crumb coat to do is pick up the crumbs and make sure that the whole cake is covered. This is actually a pretty good looking naked cake. So if you're making a naked cake, you can just stop here. It will save you having to make, you know, more buttercream. You can just make a smaller batch of buttercream. Although this coat won't show through visibly, you will be able to see any lumps and bumps. You do want to make sure that it's sharp at the edges. So the crumb coat is done. I'm going to pop that in the fridge, harden it and set it a bit more before I go on with the final coat. Okay, so while the cake is in the fridge, I've just got some dark chocolate, which I've melted. I'm just going to add a splash of oil. I'm then going to mix around. It's going to give me a slightly runnier texture. You can make a fancy ganache if you want. It'll probably taste better. At this point, I honestly don't really care. I just want a drip effect chocolate on the side of this cake. But you don't want it too runny because you do want to be able to control how far it runs down the cake, which I will show you how to do. Shortly. They've cleaned the area, so there is almost not a crumb in sight because the last thing you want is to get crumbs on your outside coat. So I've cleaned all of my tools as well. And we're basically just going to coat the cake in buttercream again, um, but this time better. <laughs> really need to be that precious about it because that is what the turntable and the scraper are for. It's just apply a thick amount of buttercream. To the cake. Keep going over it. If you see any bits where you can still see, you know, some cake or the base layer, just apply more frosting and drag the cake smoother around. This is why it's all about tools. And um, so doing this with a knife, you just wouldn't get the right finish, you know, it wouldn't be possible. So it's not that people can't bake or can't decorate the cake, it's often that they're just using the wrong tools. 
we're gonna grab the drip. Now, with a drip, you never actually wanna let it drip, okay? Never let your drip strip, you wanna control it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, with a teaspoon, ease the chocolate over the side. Remember that less is more. You can always add more, you can't take it away, okay? So be very sparing with your drip. And know that gravity never stops. So just because you've stopped pushing it doesn't mean it will stop flowing. Um, so make sure that you don't do too much. I've just done that blind as well, just to show you guys. Um, but don't do it blind. Like, look at the area you're dripping as you drip it. Get different depths and different levels and enjoy it because this bit is actually quite fun. Only when I'm happy with the outside do I then cover the top in a very, very thin layer of chocolate. Do you actually want some um, Oreos around the edge? Just a very small layer of crushed Oreos. I'm just gonna push around the bottom of this cake. Sprinkle some Oreo crumbs on top as well. A little bit of buttercream here in my hand, some leftover buttercream. I'm gonna place that in the center and I'm gonna use that to kind of build a family of Oreos around it. And here is the final product. Oh my goodness, she looks absolutely beautiful, if I might say so myself. All with really simple tips and tricks to help me trick people into thinking I can bake. Now, I really should just take this straight to the event and go. But I'm just gonna take a slice because we can't not take a slice of this cake. Goodness, you can literally hear the Oreo as I cut through. You can hear it crunching within the cake. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah. Do you wanna see close up? <laughs> Okay, so I didn't slice that very well, but there it is, close up. Really even layers, and it is as beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. I am pretty happy with that, <laughs> if I may say so myself. <laughs> oh my goodness. Incredible. The recipe will definitely be on my blog. Oh my gosh. Am I allowed to say that is the best Oreo cake I've ever had? Pop that into the box. And that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, send it to a friend. Let me know if you try this recipe, I would love to see it. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and thank you for being my internet friends. I love you very much. I will see you in my next video, bye. <laughs>